am lost for words. Okay, I, I literally am lost for words. I don't know what to make of this. We're just going to do a brief rundown real quick. I know a lot of this is redundant, but I promise you at the end of this or somewhere in in, in the end, you're going to be shocked. Um, so a brief rundown. Salomon Brothers equals Travelers Group plus City Group, which equals Salomon Smith Barney. They renamed after they combined, and they happened to be the book running manager for GameStop. Now, the series of mergers happened in the late 90s due to the Stegall Act being lifted. It's referred to as the Big Bang in finance. Salomon was running from the flash crash of 1987 that was in part caused by a trader at Salomon. Now, after GameStop launched in 2002, six months after the September 11th attacks, Salomon was accused of IPO fraud, where they would distribute IPO shares to institutional investors worldwide for business. All of the Salomon Brothers alumni were in place by this point. So you have to understand, in the late 80s, there was a big bond scandal, a big flash crash happened in 1987. This was in part caused by a trader at Salomon. They were manipulating the, the treasury. Okay, At this time, Salomon Brothers was the biggest bank on Wall Street. Their CEO, his name, was dubbed the King of Wall Street. Now, during this time of 1987, Salomon Brothers had plans. They were, they were planning on building a brand new building. Okay, we're going to get to that in a second. And their plans got changed all of a sudden due to this scandal. Now, I want you to look at this just to give you an idea of the scope of Salomon. David Salomon is now the current CEO of Goldman Sachs, who worked for Salomon Brothers during the scandal period. And they are now the biggest bank in the world, uh, that being Goldman. Warren Buffett, we all know who he is. Michael Bloomberg. We all know who he is. He is the mayor of New York City. Now get this shit. Voting in the primaries for his first run for mayor began on September 11th, 2001. I shit you not. and was postponed a day due to the attacks, obviously. Current SEC chair Gary Gensler has a twin brother, Rob Gensler, who was a trader at Salmon during this time, being the bond scandal era. Michael Stockman is now the chief risk officer at MF Global, as well as UBS America. Got there by working at Morgan Stanley after he left Salomon Brothers. John Bass, global head of institutional sales at MF Global. Look, two of them together, two peas in a pod. Got there working at UBS AG, who happens to be the other underwriter for GameStop. Now remember, Michael Stockman, John Bass, both worked at you know their respective employers after the Salomon period, in the late 90s, early 2000s. So keep that in mind. Andrew Stone, after Salomon, went to Prudential. Now unknown. He filed for bankruptcy in 2012. Louis Ranieri, he bought Bank United after leaving Salomon. He recently partnered with Shell Point Partners to offer subprime mortgage lending and basically was uh, and still is under criticisms for being the brains behind the mortgage bonds that contributed to the 2008 financial crisis. How about that? Other key facts. Salomon Brothers, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Department of Defense, and the Central Intelligence Agency, as well as American Express, all own floors of World Trade Center 7. And there are records of renovations being completed in the late 80s, early 90s by Salomon and the SEC by removing entire floors, adding weight to certain areas, and diesel generators on the fifth floor. Salomon Brothers also is the creator of the first mortgage-backed security, who obviously, is uh, played a role in the 2008 crisis. So we have one crisis of 1987 now. We have the 2008 crisis now. And uh, now we're talking about 9-11. Salomon Brothers has close ties to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, and they have had these ties for the last 30 years. Salomon Brothers plus Travelers Group equals Salomon Smith Barney, who got acquired by Citigroup, who became Citigroup Global Markets, who entered into a joint venture with Morgan Stanley, who then both dropped the Salomon name to escape the tarnished reputation it had created from the flash crash and the treasury scandal and the reasoning why they did these last joint ventures was due to the IPO fraud that came out, likely due <laughs> to IPOs underwritten that, that year, which falls in with GameStop. Remember, all of the mergers and acquisitions were done after the scandal when the alumni from Salomon had already left and scattered abroad. So they were likely working at, at places like UBS, places like Morgan Stanley, when they underwrote GameStop. So keep that in mind. 
Now, 1980s, Bond scandal, Salomon, and the flash crash of 1987. Rotenkowski was the traitor accused of uh, basically being the one participating for the Treasury scandal. Much later, a former Salomon alumni admitted this when he was uh, uh, interviewed by CNBC, and we'll look at that in a minute. But basically right here, to make to give you a snippet from my last point, in November 1988, Salomon Brothers withdrew suddenly plans to build a large new complex at Columbus Circle in Midtown and agreed to a 20-year lease for the top 19 floors of Seven World Trade Center. The building was extensively renovated in 1989 to accommodate the needs of Salomon Brothers. Most of three existing floors were removed as tenants continued to occupy other floors and more than 350 tons of steel were added to construct three double height trading floors. Nine diesel generators were installed on the fifth floor as part of a backup power station. Essentially, Salomon is constructing a building within a building, and it's an occupied building, which complicates the situation, said a distinct manager of Silverstein Properties. The unusual task was possible because it was designed to allow for entire portions of floors to be removed without affecting the building's structural integrity on the assumption that someone might need double height floors. Well, that's a load of bullshit. Sudden change of plans. I'm going to get murdered for this one, by the way. Okay, so this is what I was referring to about the CNBC uh, interview with the previous Salomon alumni worker. He says that some might say you could blame the whole crash on Dan Rotenkowski. Okay, before you get all worked up, <laughs> I don't really blame the crash on Rotenkowski. I keep saying the name wrong. I apologize. Who chaired the House Means Committee at the time and had spent many years operating the... I did not get that screenshot correct. I'm sorry. You, you get the point. He was basically saying that he played a very important role of the crash of 1987. At the time of the September 11, 2001 attacks now, Salomon Smith Barney was by far the largest tenant in World Trade Center 7, occupying 1,202,900 square feet, or 64% of the building, which included floors 28 through 45. Other major tenants included ITT Hartford Insurance Group, American Express, Bank International, Standard Charter Bank, and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Smaller tenants included the Internal Revenue Service, Regional Council, the United States Secret Service, and the smallest tenants were the New York City Office of Emergency Management, National Association of Insurance Commissioners, Federal Home Loan, Home Loan Bank, First State Management Group Incorporated, Provident Financial Management, and the Immigration and Neutralization Service. The Department of Defense and Central Intelligence Agency shared the 25th floor. So you're telling me the most powerful agencies on the planet didn't see this coming and no one died and, and they were all prepared for this to happen. I'm not going to get into that tangent, but I want you to see something. It's going to blow your mind. So you want to know how deep this shit goes, everyone? Let's go back to the late 1980s, the Treasury scandal. They had to have gotten punished for this, right? There had to have been some kind of fine or jail time for these people, right? No. They called in Warren Buffett to sweep up the mess while the crooks scattered across the world and are now amongst us this very day and amongst some of the most powerful positions. Oh, the settlement for the scandal? You're going to shit your pants. Mr. Powell. Honorable Jerome H. Powell, I should say. You know the current uh, chair of the Federal Reserve, you know, the one that's about to go uh, to zero. Yeah, he's the one that presided over that uh, over that case. And I'm going to go hide now. <laughs>